Hi, this is Tomasz Kellner, Editor-in-Chief of GE Reports. Today we are in Cameri, Italy, where great things are happening in additive technologies for Avio Aero, the GE aviation business. We just drove five minutes from Cameri, an ancient Italian town, to arrive at what's Europe's most advanced additive manufacturing facility. Come with us for a visit at GE Aviation's Avio Aero business. Hi there! Hey! Hi Thomas! How are you? Fine! And you? Nice to meet you! Nice to meet you too! I'm Dario, manufacturing engineer of this uh, Camry plant. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, we hear a lot about additive manufacturing, but what is it exactly? Can you describe it for us? Yeah, for sure. Additive manufacturing is a completely breakthrough technology respect to the past because we are adding material layer by layer in order to obtain a net shape product. In the past, we usually cut material, so subtracting material. So that's a huge advantage respect to the past. Now, why is it so beneficial for your company, for GE and for Avio Aero? It's beneficial for uh, different uh, aspects because uh, we are for sure saving material, so we are more green and we are saving cost. And uh, also from the design point of view, we have uh, huge uh, advantages in terms of uh, degrees of freedom. So our designers are uh, in very happy to this because uh, they can uh, use the material only when it's needed and uh, it's uh, the maximum aspiration for a design engineer. Great, well can we see some additive manufacturing machines? Yeah, for sure, follow me, I can okay. show you. Let's go. Dario, yeah. so here we are uh, in the additive manufacturing factory. Now what are, what's happening in these black boxes? You are right, this is one of the two technology that we have here. This is the electron beam melting. So inside of these black boxes, basically, we have no more than a node television, but uh, the electron beam, in this case, instead of drawing images on a screen, is drawing images on a bed of powder. And uh, what we are obtaining is, layer by layer, this kind of product. So what happens is the electron beam shoots down from the top to the powder of the material and basically welds it layer by layer as you grow, right? Correct. You're now, how long does it take to produce a blade like this? Yeah, it depends uh, by the size, but uh, we are talking about two or three days. Mm -hmm. It depends by the size of the blade, but you have to imagine that uh, we are not building only one blade per shot, but uh, we are building a cluster of six, eight, nine blades, it depends by the size. So it's like a forest of blades inside that machine? Yeah, it's like a forest. Now Dario, tell me, how does one become an additive manufacturing engineer? I mean, this technologies, these technologies are so new. Uh, I mean, you're young, but you yeah. couldn't have possibly studied them in school. No, I studied mechanical engineer at the Polytechnic of Turin, but uh, tomorrow you will be in the Polytechnic where uh, now Avio has uh, an uh, additive lab. Very interesting. Well, Dario, thank you so much for showing us around. You're welcome. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Good morning, Thomas. Welcome. I'm Franco Tortarolo from Avioero, responsible of research programs. Nice to okay. meet you, Franco. So tell us about your research program. You are at, at the campus of Politecnico, and uh, Politecnico is one of the key actors for us uh, in the frame of the network. We have a strong network for research and innovation. Tell us about the network. So uh, how does it work? Well, we started in the 90s, early in the 90s. And to stay on the, on the edge of the technological issues, we required a collaboration and uh, uh, inclusion of uh, universities as small medium enterprise. So we have a lot of collaborations with them. So which universities are part of these networks and what companies do you work with? 
There are uh, roughly 20 universities, Polytechnico is one of them, then there are other many in, in, in Italy, roughly 20 from the south to the north, and the small medium enterprise that are supporting the research because they are flexible, uh, cheap uh, and, and, and fast. What are some of the technologies that are most exciting for you? There are many technologies, but probably the most technology today is the additive manufacturing that we are developing uh, since, uh, let me say, 10 years uh, with Polytechnico. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, have you seen Camry? So that Camry is uh, the plant that has been uh, basically from these collaborations. And now we are going to launch uh, a joint lab uh, fully dedicated to the research of additive manufacturing here at Polytechnico, which is that part uh, of the building. Tell us about the lab. Uh, what's going to be happening inside? We are going to recruit uh, young talents and develop uh, new materials, uh, new, new components uh, to test new machines. It will be an area of uh, 600 square meters roughly with uh, four or five machines of the last generation and we'll try to, to expand the, the future of the components using this technology. Great. Well, Franco, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you to you. Very nice bye. to meet you. Bye bye. Thank See you ya. very much. Bye. bye. We just arrived at the Polytechnic in Bari. This place, together with the Polytechnic in Turin, belongs to a network of university research labs helping Avio Aero and GE Aviation develop next generation additive technologies. Engineers over here are specifically focusing on future repair techniques for jet engines like cold spray and laser repair. Hello. Hello. Nice Hi, to Tomas. Meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Gregorio. Welcome to the Apulia Repair Development Center. Thanks so much. This is uh, a new lab that we opened uh, last uh, November and is a partnership between uh, Avio Aero and uh, the Polytechnic of Bari. Let's go take a look. Yeah, let's go. Follow me. So this is uh, the laser deposition equipment and uh, you know laser deposition, powder fed laser deposition is uh, uh, well established technology that we have uh, uh, completed with uh, more innovation. We have uh, uh, digital, uh, um, digital uh, definition of uh, um, the deposition through reverse engineering and we have uh, uh, online control of uh, the laser deposition parameters uh, through uh, control of the melting pool. And what kind of components do you fix here? Uh, first of all, we, we will fix uh, um, turbine blades, also with uh, some difficult materials like uh, titanium aluminide, but uh, we can also process uh, uh, aluminum or uh, uh, other kind of uh, nickel alloys. And how does the laser deposition technology work? So if you work in this way, you have a laser beam creating a very little and controlled melting pool on the base material. Then there is the powder injection with uh, the material, the metal that, uh, you, uh, that you select and uh, the powder uh, melt in the melting pool so you can uh, obtain addition of material on an existing layer and you can uh, build it layer by layer. So basically if there's a part of the blade missing you can yeah. rebuild it back up with this technology yes. and repair it. You can rebuild it with uh, almost uh, uh, every kind of uh, geometry and w with uh, very little amount of uh, overstock. And uh, Gregorio, what other machines do you have in this lab? We have uh, the cold spray equipment that uh, I can show you. Okay, let's go. This. Gregorio, what is this machine? This is uh, our cold spray equipment. And what does it do? The cold spray is a very innovative repair technology and it is able 
to uh, uh, rebuild part of uh, one component by um, spraying uh, metallic powder uh, at high velocity. Can you tell me how does it work and how high the velocity is that fly that makes the particles fly? The the velocity is uh, several times the speed of sound, and uh, uh, it is able to obtain abrasion of the metal particle without fusion and without melting. So uh, the innovation is uh, uh, mainly on this. So basically, the particle flies so fast, several times the speed of sound, that when it hits the blade or the component that you need to repair, it just sticks. Yes, that's right. We don't have fusion, we don't have heat transfer, we don't affect in any way the geometry and the structural properties of the base material. And this is very important when you try to repair something already existing. And this also belongs to the family of additive technologies, right? Yes, there is potentially no limitation to the amount of, uh, um, of material that uh, you can uh, rebuild and uh, you can also uh, rebuild uh, very complex uh, uh, 3D geometries. And what kind of components do you, would you repair with this machine? Mainly we will repair uh, aluminum and magnesium uh, gearbox housing and also um, aero engines uh, turbine blades. Well, Gregoria, thanks so much for showing us around your lab today. Welcome to Pomigliano, an industrial suburb just outside of Naples. Many large companies have their factories here, including Avio Aero, a GE aviation business. They make next generation's engines here that include additive parts. Let's take a look. Hello. Welcome. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Giacomo Veneruso. I am a manufacturing engineer of a high foil center here in Pomigliano. Giacomo, what is it that you're holding in your hand? This is a three, 3D uh, blade printed uh, that uh, we are now working in our uh, high foil center. Now this blade uh, looks very different than the one we saw in Camery, where they actually were printed. Yes, of course, because uh, you saw a casting one uh, that uh, we machine inside uh, our uh, excellent center area. Now, why would you make a blade for jet engine on a 3D printer instead of, say, stamp it? What is and the benefit? The answer is very easy. Try. Wow. It's very light. Very light. So what are the benefits? So, so if you have a light printed blade, then you have a lighter jet engine? Of course. What material is it made from? This is a titanium aluminide. Mm -hmm. It's a new, uh, a new material uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we use to uh, LPT uh, stage 4, 5 and 6 on Gen X, new engine. So this is the, the LPT stands for the low, low pressure turbine, Yes, right? of course. And the, and the GE9X, uh, I see signs for the GE9X all over this place. Yes, everywhere. That is the, the, the world's largest jet engine. You are right. That the GE is right now assembling Yes, and it's testing. a big challenge it's for, challenges. yes, big challenge for every, everyone that is working on. Great. Well, Giacomo, thank you so much for having us. Nice to meet you. Nice Welcome. to meet you too. Hello. Hi, bro. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name is Carlo Silvestro. I'm an engineering subsection manager here in Pomigliano plant. And uh, we are working on uh, GNTI programs. Hey, Carlo, tell me about the advanced table prop program. Yes, sure, Tomas. Uh, the ATP is the engine where we will utilize more additive manufactured parts than other uh, engines in the aviation history. Here in Pomigliano, we are developing the ATP combustor. Tell me about the, the ratio of additive components on this engine. Yes, for this part, we will uh, replace uh, almost 800 parts with 12 additive manufactured parts. So we will have on the engine that 35% uh, of, of the engine will be produced by additive manufacturing. 
That is really interesting. And so exactly what in Pomigliano you are trying to figure out how to manufacture these new parts because this is for the first time. No one yeah, has yeah. done this before. This is the first time we already received some uh, prototype from ATC. We are designing developing this new uh, new combustor chamber. This is, uh, um, let's say, an innovation for Aviator for G Aviation because this is the first time we are developing and producing a reverse flow combustor chamber. Very good. Well, Carlo, thank you so much for talking to us. Let's thank take you. a look at the ah. manufacturing. Okay. Hi, Tomas. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am Eugenio Zeringa. I am uh, NPI lead uh, in Combustor Center in the manufacturing technology department. Eugenio, I have a question for you. We just heard Please. about the new advanced servoprop and that it, about a third of the engine is going to be produced on additive manufacturing machines. Uh, give us an example. What do you do here? Yes, it's a correct. Uh, on ATP Combustor, this is uh, our first experience uh, on additive material and uh, we try to set uh, usually process that uh, conventional and non-conventional process that we use uh, on um, normal uh, raw material forging and casting to apply at this uh, part. So it's a manufacturing process because it is so new that you actually have to test it out. Yes, yes. We try to test this, uh, this process and share also so with other side uh, just uh, to give uh, our experience on this part. So what okay. are you testing right now? Yes, the testing is a conventional operation. Uh, we already done uh, the turning operation, milling operation, and in this moment it's possible to see the outer liner in a uh, uh, laser machine, okay? While here it's possible to see uh, the inner liner. Also this part wait uh, to perform the laser uh, drilling operation. So I can see, so this is this entire part, this large part was 3D printed? Yes, yes. This and also the outer. At the final, both the part uh, we assemble also in our house. Great. Well, Eugenio, thank you so much for showing us okay, around. Okay, very thanks. We, we have a long journey ahead of us, but you should feel very comfortable that Italy and Avio Air are going to be in the center of the growth of our additive ecosystem as we go forward.